Sorry about the wait, folks, but we are back today with the Los Angeles Angels. We're going right into game two, our second game of 160 or whatever it is, against the White Sox. We won game one in this series, the opener of the season, 5-4. to four. Trying to start off the season 2-0 today, and we're going to see the first start in the Angels uniform for Max Freed. Coming off a really stellar 2024 season. Brought him in as a free agent signing, and here he goes as our number two pitcher in the rotation. First batter up, Andrew Benintendi. He looks at strike three, thought he had the walk. Instead, he is retired on strikes. The replay of that one right on the bottom inside corner of the zone. And that should have been a strike call right there. That's a missed call from the ump. Blackman takes first base. Hitters counts. Luis Roberts underneath it. And Mickey Moniak puts him out. In the air to left field. Clean up batter Andrew Vaughn is out. O'Neal tracks it down. And after the walk... No more base runners allowed by Freed. We're facing Mike Soroka here in this one. Coming off a 500 season record wise, and he walks Shauna well to lead off the first inning for the Halos. Edward Julian, and that should have been strike three. But we'll take the call from the ump. And then he looks at another strike. This time it's called correctly. Brandon Drury into center field. That's a base hit. Sean Owell to second base. Only one out. And that brings up the cleanup batter, Logan O'Hoppy, but he chops right into a double play to end the first. Leading off the second inning. Into left field. That's going to get down for extra bases. Hopping off the wall. Mickey Moniak leads off the second with a stand-up double. And that one's gone. Kevin Kiermeyer will plate Brandon Drury and himself. It's 2-0. Angels on the board. Kiermaier had a day to forget in his opening game of the season with his new team. But in game two, he makes up for all of it by putting us in front. 100 exit velo. We go top of the third. Charlie Blackman back up and striking out. Max free, no runs allowed through three. Only one hit. Bottom of the third, full count. Nolan Shonowell sneaks one through, third and short. And he's on base again to lead off the inning. And Edward Julian looks at ball four. That's the second walk issued by Soroka. So two men on, nobody out for Drury. But he grounds into a double play. And that will get Shonowell to third base, but now two outs off the 4-6-3. And there's strike three. Oh, Hoppy looks at another one. And he is down on strikes. We go top of the four. Even count Andrew Vaughn just lost his entire bat. Watch out there in the dugout. He's trying to take out one of her coaches. Not sure what's going on there. But then with an awful swing, he is retired. Max Freed picks up his third strikeout. Two outs now here in the fourth. And that's a blast to left. Moncada will get the White Sox within one run. Solo shot here. That was an absolute bomb to left field. 419. Same exit Vila was Kiermaier's home run, but this one went a lot further. We go top of the fifth now, and Montgomery takes the walk. Just the second one given up by Freed. That brings up Edgar Caro. Down on strikes. 
One out, and the rookie Gonzalez is underneath it. Popped out behind home plate, so Hoppy retires him out for number two. And then Benintendi chops it to first base, and the inning is over. Two to one, Angels. Bottom five, one out. Why did Neto swing on that one? I have no idea. But they brought in Alec Marsh now. So that's it for Mike Soroka. Could not get through five innings. And Robert gets on base here in the six with that pretty weak single. And that's going to be it for Max Fried. His day's done. Could not get through a full six innings, but did pitch very well. And Griffin Canning steps in. First guy out of the bullpen here in the second game of the season. Open for him to have a solid outing here, but he promptly walks Andrew Vaughn. So two runners on now. Moncada back at the plate, but Canning paints the corner, and he's down on strikes looking. Here's the ump cam on that one. Good call. Perfect pitch. Dominic Smith with a base hit into right fields. They don't send the runner home. No, they do, and it's a tie ball game. Luis Roberts crosses home plates. Did not think they were going to send the runner, but I guess they do, and we're tied at two, but the inning is over. Chasing the slider on the outside. And we are going bottom of the sixth. Alec Marsh still on the mound for Chicago. High ball game, two to two. Leading off the inning, Edward Julian has extra bases. All the way to the wall. And he gets the second base easily. A stand-up double for the Angels. Drury one for two today, but he swings on that one. Horrible swing, but pulled off the bag is the first baseman. And Drury is going to end up safe despite the strikeouts. So runners at the corners. And ball four taken by Ohapi. Alec Marsh losing his composure here in the sixth inning. That's a base hit for Modiac, and that will bring home a runner. The Angels lead three to two, and the bases are still juiced. An RBI single for Mickey Modiac. And smart job for, by us not to try and force two runs home there. But Kevin Kiermeyer follows up with another double play ball, but he beats the throw to first. And it's still only one out, and now it's four to two Angels. The rookie, Odell Herrera, looks at the ball, and Kiermeyer is safely into second. A couple of wild pitches here by Marsh. But he will stay in north of 40 pitches. Herrera blocked at third base, but that's an infield single, and it's his first hit plus his first RBI in his career. Odell Herrera, the full-time DH, finally gets his first major league hits. Third base coach Carlos Febles gets the ball for him. We're going to keep that one. That will be a uh, friend ball for him for the rest of his career. And that will do it for Alec Marsh. Jake Irvin comes in for the second time for the White Sox in this series and promptly gets Tyler O'Neill to fly out to right field. The runners holds. Two outs. 5-2. Neto swings. Four out at seconds, and the inning is over, but damage done. Angels tack on three runs to take the lead once again. Canning stays in here in the seventh, but Edgar Caro leads off the inning with an opposite field single, or rather double. That brings up Jacob Gonzalez. That's a flare into left field. That one gets down. Caro coming home, and he is safe. So a quick run to start the inning. One batter later, Charlie Blackman. Double play, 5-4-3. Inning over. We go all the way to the ninth inning. 
The clerk is gonna come in. It's closing time. Same score. Five to three. Smith underneath this one. O'Neal comes over to make the outs. Two outs away from closing out the White Sox again. Montgomery swings through the strike. Pitchers counts. Montgomery sends it out of the ballpark. That one is hammered to right field, and it is crushed. Four hundred sixty-four. That had to have been a perfect swing because that was hot off the bat, and the White Sox another solo shot to bring them back within one run once again. 5-4, same score as last game. Edgar Caro looks at strike three. One batter left for the White Sox after LeClerc's first strikeouts. He will face the rookie, Jacob Gonzalez. And he pops out. O'Neal comes in. Stella left field and the game is over. The Angels win again by one run. And we are 2-0 to start the season. Another close game against the White Sox, and we end up sweeping them 4 to nothing, winning game three by one run as well. So our first three games of the season, all one-run victories. All at home as well. Drew Thorpe gives up five runs to the Angels as he got the start, but Julian, Drury, and Logan Ohapi, all homer. Ohapi with two solo shots. Julian with a single solo shot, and John Means... I guess got the start, but must have been hit by that pitch or hit by the hit that he gave up. And I guess he was knocked out for the rest of the game. But we end up sweeping them in game four, six to three, a three run run win this time around with Zach Neto hitting a grand slam or not a grand slam home run, but at least one home run with four RBIs, had a double as well. So Seth with two run runs over six innings. Andrew Wands and Strom allow zero. We follow it up by beating the Orioles in a three-game series. And we're coming off a game that we won again by a single run where Max Freed pitched seven innings and only allowed two earned runs. Andrew Chafin, Blake Trinan, and LeClerc all came into pitch and only gave up zero runs each. Fantastic stuff on the bullpen so far. Now we'll take us into our first road game of the season against the Cleveland Guardians. Should be a fun one here today. Both teams come in with only one loss under their belts after their first handful of series. They are 7-1. We are 6-1, I believe. And we got to face Tanner Bibby, who kind of got shelled in his first starts, trying to make up for it here. Leading off the game, Nolan Shanoel. Straight to center field. Not enough power behind it, and he is done. Next up is Edward Julian on a line to center fields. And now another line out to end the inning. So first three batters all make solid contact, but cannot get on base. And now it's really the first start for John Means this season. Has not even had a one single out to pitch after getting hit in his first starts. He'll face Stephen Kwan, and he got him to strike out on the slider. Outside of the zone, he chased it. That one's grounded to second base. Good throw by Drury for out number two. Grounded again to first. Means covers the bag, and 
beats the runner to it. Pretty clean first inning for both teams. We go top of the second. Ohapi gets a hold of the fastball. It's going to the right center gap, and this one leaves the ballpark. Gets out of here. Ohapi with a solo shot, his third of the season. And the Angels, like always, open the scoring here in this game. Was behind the fastball, but Ohapi has some real power behind his swings. So if you get a good pitch, odds are he can get extra bases at the very least. And this one was almost robbed, but luckily not. That'll bring up right fielder Mickey Moniak, and he is a bit behind this one for the first out here in the inning. What is the ump looking at here? How is that a strike? That was even less of a strike. Here, Meyer just got hosed at the plate. That should have been a walk. Next up, Odell Herrera, and I just can't figure out this ump zone. If those previous two were strikes, that one definitely was. But I guess we'll take the walk. A powerful shot to right field, but O'Neal behind it, and the Angels strand a runner. Ramirez leads off the second for the Guardians with a base hit. Right up the guts. John Means. Mid-20s pitching-wise, there's Kyle Manzardo going down on strikes. Second K for John Means here. And this one, and there is number three. O'Neal Cruz chases this one on the outside to end the inning. The lead off the third. Neto with another really good swing. Had plenty of those already, but just can't seem to get it through to the outfield. And a similar story here. Inside pitch. Donowell jammed on it. Two outs. And out number three. Julian got a right to first base. Just can't really get much going here against Tanner Bibby for some reason. Prius down on strikes. Got him upstairs. John Means picks up number four. Cody Huff in the air to left. But not enough power behind it, and an easy out for left fielder Tyler O'Neill. Full count. Quan looks at strike number three, and he knew it too. John Means pitching a clean game so far, only one hit. No runs allowed through three. Jury leads off the fourth. This ump zone is ridiculously ambiguous. I just can't figure it out. Like, what is this call? You can't be calling that for strike three. Come on, man. Nobody is swinging at that. But there's ball four. Going to call that a strike? I don't think so. Hoppy gets on base. Moniak lines it right to Cruz. That's shortstop. So many good time swings, but simply could not put the ball into play, at least... And play for us. Plenty of plays for the White Sox defense. Or the White Sox. The Guardians defense. Excuse me. And right now. We cannot add any more to that Ohapi home run. Jimenez walked here to lead off the fourth for Cleveland. Nobody out. Josh Naylor. Left field. And caught at the wall. Holding at first base is Jimenez, but Ramirez takes the shot off his backside, and he will reach as well. Two runners on for Loriano. Grounded. This could be a double play, but Neto pulls Drury off the bag. And instead, it's nobody out on that play. Base is juiced. And Zardo. A good pitch to swing on. Carry to center field. He is out, but the tag up is home. And Cleveland's on the board. We're tied at one. That error from Neto proven very costly here because right now it would still be 1-0 Angels. In a different inning. We get out of the jam, though, with the strikeout. Cruz with his second strikeout in the game. 
on both at bats. John Means happy to escape the jam there. 3 1 count. Quan looks at strike two. Over 100 pitches is John Means, and Quan takes first base. That's going to be it for him. Dave Roberts will take him out. And instead, the Angels will bring in Griffin Canning once again. ERA under three through nine full innings. And change. Quan heading for second base. He's in there safely. But Jimenez did take, did take strike two, rather. He's got a full count. Lifted to shallow right. Modiak puts him out. End of the fifth. Tied at one. Only one hit for either team. And this is not going to be number two for us. Nolan Shawnell has had plenty of good swings here, but just can't get it to fall down in the outfields. And now we're starting to strike out. Julian with the curveball. Just an ugly swing, really. A powerful shot to center field from Drury, but underneath it for the out. And right now, Tanner Bibby and company just really keeping us in the doghouse right now. Josh Naylor leads off the inning with the base hits. Let's see how long Griffin Kenning goes in this one. Went for a while in the last game we saw. There's an out to Ramirez. And now into left field. Loriano could not get a hold of it. He's out. That brings up the sixth batter and a pitcher's count. Similar play. Nobody scores. That is going to do it for Bibby. Eli Morgan's going to relieve him. We finally get a generous call from the ump. That one was touching the zone a little bit, but we'll take the ball. That was probably the right call. We follow suit by striking out, though. First K for Morgan. Kiermaier lines out. A second line out for us to cruise on a really good hit. And at first base, we are going to leave him stranded. Our batting struggles continue here against the Guardians and against their bullpen as well. Danning stays in. Now north of 30 pitches. The third strikeout from O'Neill Cruz here in this one. Rough day for him. Micah Prius follows suits. He's down on strikes. And Cody Huff is retired. Canning with three strikeouts here to end the seventh inning. Let's go, dude. It's going to be it for Eli Morgan. Trevor Stefan comes in. And promptly gets O'Neal to sky out straight to center field. Busy day for him out there. Zach Neto uh, jammed inside. Not my best swing. He's out. That one's got some carry. Hot off the bat, but Sean Owell is out again. So many contact swings that we put in play, especially in the outfield, but none of them are dropping down for base hits. And the same is happening for Cleveland as well. A pitcher's duel between both pitching staffs is opening up right now. What a play at short! Zach Neto with the hops to go up and get it. it saved an extra base hit right there. That was going to go hot towards the gap, but instead, a nice play. And now grounded to him. Four out at second base. We're going to the ninth inning, folks. Tied at one apiece. Edward Julian leads it off. Opposite field. And late again. Been late on so many of these swings here in this game. And that's been the problem. But now, well-timed, and Drury is on base with that single. Had to be a perfect pitch right down the heart of the plate for me to get on base with it. But then we're back to the ugly swings. Ohapi with a uh, cut to forget right there. Full counts. And Moniak behind the high fastball. Had a swing on that one. That was going to be a strike three call no, no matter what. And we still... Cannot get back on the board. Ohapi has our only 
run of the ball game and one of her only two hits but Loriano looks at strike three as Canning stays in to try and get us two extras here and Kyle Manzardo follows suit also swinging through it Canning absolutely dealing in these two outings here in this episode but O'Neill Cruz finally gets on base after three strikeouts he sneaks it past third base and the inning is not over yet. Old counts. And ball four to Prius. And there are two runners on for the Guardians. One in scoring position. That's going to be it for Griffin Canning. LeClerc comes in trying to force extras and prevent the blown save. He gives up the hits. Kiermaier's got to throw it. It is in there. He beats the runner. Cruz out at home plate. And there is no walk off here. Kiermaier with a game saving play. Literally. Can you believe it? It's not over yet. A perfect throw from center field. And a hoppy, perfectly placed glove. He gets Cruz out at home. What a play by Kevin Kiermaier. And he's going to lead off the 10th inning as well for the Angels. With the base hit, that's going to bring home Mickey Moniak. And the Angels jump in front off the bat of Kevin Kiermeyer. A defensive play to save the game. And now he puts us in the lead on the very next play. What an episode for Kevin Kiermeyer. Odell Herrera, though. Follows him up by grinding into another double play. We've done that so many times here in this episode already. It's really bothering me. Inside pitch. And out. O'Neal is retired. We're going bottom 10. Leading by one. They will have a man on second base to lead off the inning though. Leclerc's going to stay in. Top of the order for the Guardians. Quan looks at strike three. Painting the edge, a perfect pitch for out number one. Jimenez in the right field, tracked down by Moniak. The runner is still holding at second base. One more out could do it. Josh Naylor looks at strike two. Another great pitch by LeClerc. Even count, got him on the inside. The Angels win two to one. Every game comes down to the final out, man. Every game is a one-run win, but I'll take them. Coming out of that win, we would secure the series win, losing game two, but winning game three again by a single run. And we are eight and two on the season. And we're not done. We're going to get through the entire rest of the month. These last 10 minutes of the episode, folks, we have a highlight moment right here. Max Freed trying to pitch a complete game shutout here against the Pittsburgh Pirates. Top of the ninth, two nothing Angels. Willie Adamez leading off for Pittsburgh. Max Freed now at exactly 100 pitches. 101 on the way. Fouled off behind home plates. Goes to a pitcher's count. And Adamez looks at strike three. How many backwards Ks have we seen in this episode already? We're only adding to it. Next up, Jack Sawinski. Looking at strike one. And now fouling off the fastball. That was hammered foul. Inside pitch. Misses, but going around for strike three. Sawinski couldn't help himself. 
One out away. Facing Justin Turner. Lifted to left field. It's got some carry. Going back at the wall. It's caught by Franco to end the ball game. And Freed has his first shutout as an angel. Let's go. So many highlights here in this episode, folks, for a lot of different players. I'm loving this. We would drop our next game against Pittsburgh, but also we lose a major offensive piece. Brandon Drury has torn his labrum and he is going to miss over six months of the year. His season is officially over and he will head to the 60 day injured list for the rest of the season. We're going to bring in Brian Anderson to replace him. He will play third base. Julian goes back to second, where Drury was playing before he got hurt. We're going to move Neto up to third because he's off to a really good start batting-wise. And against lefties, we're going to bring in Travis Darnoud to DH in place of Odell Herrera, who will instead be playing third base. And Julian will be our full-time second baseman moving forward. A huge loss for the offense. Drury was batting, you know, okay. But he was our best clutch hitter in the entire lineup. So to lose him as our third batter is pretty awful. We go into a game now against the Red Sox. With bases loaded for Kevin Kiermeyer. Top of the eight. Only one out. And he grounds it into a near double play. But he beats the throw to first. And a run will score. And the inning's not done yet. Neto crosses home plates. One run game. Sean Owell down the first baseline. And that will bring home the third base runner. And the game is tied at four. A rough inning here for Justin Slayton. And the Angels bring it back to a tie ball game. Julian opposite field. And that will plate another run. And the Angels lead five to four again. The string and runs together in all these games. Not really showing off too much power, but we're at least getting some runs together. That's going to be it for Slayton. Whitlock checks in the ball game and immediately retires Ohapi. That is a really nice pitch on strike three. So, middle of the eighth, five to four, nine hits for us, eight for them. We go bottom eights. Andrew Chafin on the mound, and he starts by walking Tristan Casis. Not what you want to see from one of your setup guys. But a double play here, but Hernandez beats the throw to first just like Kiermaier did. So one out, still a man on first base, and now Trevor Story in the right field. And that's going to get the runner all the way to third base. A double there for Story. Two in scoring position. And we are going to intentionally walk Von Grissom, who's batting seventh. Over three today, but we said, no, he's got too much power. We're going to load the bases for young prospect, Sedane Rafaela, batting 240 this season. Strike three. Up and in from Chafin with the slider. Beautiful pitch to paint the corner. Kyle Teal has the last chance, and he can't bring anybody home. Stephen gets out of the jam, and it's still 5-4. to four. Angels, a big inning right there. We're going bottom nine. Trying to prevent the walk-off with Jose LeClerc going for his ninth save of the season. Facing De'Ron Blanco, and he swings right through the slider left over the heart of the plate. A dangerous pitch. But luckily, no damage done. There's strike three. Yoshida goes down looking. So many backwards Ks here in this episode, folks. Can we get one more? Not quite. Rafael Devers swings through strike two. Way in front. And now, hammered to left fields. But not enough power. The game is over. The Angels win another one-run game. That's the fourth or fifth of the episode. So many of them, but this team knows how to win close games. 
and so does our pitching staff. We end up getting through the rest of April. We drop a couple of series against the Phillies. We drop one against the Blue Jays and the Brewers, but won all the rest of them, taking down the Pirates and the White Sox again. We end up winning three out of four against the Red Sox. But against the Blue Jays, John Means pitched a complete game shutout as the Angels would win 11-0, only four hits allowed. We move to 18-14 on the season, just one and a half games back from the Mariners, who are off to a really impressive start this season. We've got the second best pitching staff in the division right now, with the Rangers above us in terms of runs allowed, but we have the third best offense. But according to our batting average, that's not the case necessarily. At 23rd, we are fifth in home runs with Julian, Kiermaier, Ohapi, all with seven plus. But we are bottom five in fielding, which is a big concern a month in the season. But our pitching staff, as expected, has been as good, if not better, than they were in spring training based on the competition levels. And Griffin Canning is pitching an absolutely awesome season so far we'll go over his stats here in a moment but guys who are struggling ohabi has been our cleanup batter all year long because of his power he's got seven home runs but he is batting only 141 after one full month of action and nearly 100 at bats aaron hicks is not batting very well bronco is doing better than spring training but still not where i would like him to be and before he got hurt Dre was batting 234, slugging 391, so we're going to miss him. But top performers are Nolan Shanoel, Tyler O'Neill, Anderson's come in and played very well in place of Brandon Drury. But Julian, Darnaud, O'Neill are the top sluggers right now and top OPS getters as well. In terms of pitchers, Canning is 5 and 1, which is the only guy on the team to have five wins. And he's kept his whip below 1.23 and his ERA below 2.00. 36 strikeouts to 12 walks. He is absolutely dealing out of the bullpen. Uh, Max Free, John Means, Joe Ryan, all doing what they were doing back in spring training. Really only a couple of pitchers not doing very well this year. And that includes Blake Trinan and Jonathan Lawasiga. But they've only had a couple of innings each. Their whips are very low, so I feel like more innings would mean that their ERA would come down if they can keep the whip where it is right now, then that ERA will definitely go down. But Reed Detmers is definitely having a very similar start as to what he did last year, so I feel like the best move to make is to start Griffin Canning over Detmers as the fifth spot in our starting rotation. And in our bullpen, we're going to move Matt Strom up to our top long relief pitcher, we're going to let Andrew Wants take over as the main middle relief pitcher in place of Lawasiga. And we're also going to replace Andrew Chafin in setup with Jose Soriano just to try and get these pitchers some more innings across the board because we were only using like five of them in the, in the bullpen so far. We're going to round out by going over some prospect updates from the farm system. Barrett Kent had a really rough month of April, but Juan Flores and Double A. Batted pretty well as the starting catcher. And how about Marco Luciano in Triple A batting 321, driving in eight RBIs over 78 at bats. An awesome start to his campaign. And then one of our rookie pitchers that we just drafted last season, Robert Carlick, having an outstanding April with a 1.5 ERA over 12 innings pitched in Double A. Can't really ask for much better than that. And then Adam Wolf in AAA, also absolutely dealing over 31 innings pitched, 19 strikeouts, and a really solid ERA against AAA batters. Walker Jenkins also off to a pretty decent start, way better than what he did last year, and slugging pretty well as well. But I still have yet to call up anybody to replace the roster spot for Drury. So I gotta think about who should we call up from AAA or from AA to replace and fill out the active roster. Who knows? We'll find out next time, folks. I'll see you guys there. Please like, subscribe, and peace.